what Paul said. He said that the uh, field plays a little smaller. Yeah. And so you can put ball in and counterattacks. How much of that messaging was going on? Well, it's a lot. I mean, we, myself, a bunch of guys at Academy Kids have grown up playing here. I mean, it does play a little different. Uh, it feels small, it feels tight, uh, and we use that to our advantage. Uh, we'll try and press high and keep them pinned back, and then, you know, when we get the ball and attack, you always have to, you know, keep guys wide and, you know, try and be effective with your crosses. I think Danny Leva's set-piece delivery is going to be one of the keys for tomorrow. I think that on a small, tight field always helps. So, yeah, that's just field is what it is. I'm not asking you to give how much to put into this game. There's a lot, there's a, there's a lot of give and, give and take. That's not the right word. There was a lot of discussion on this whole stretch. Because you win this game, you're two games away from a final. This is a good opponent. They're you know, USL champs last year. I have said publicly that we'll have a little bit more you know, presence on the bench, even starters. I'll lay that out there. Maybe a couple of starters that might surprise some people uh, because we're going to take this seriously. Now, are we a little thin, a little light? Yes. Certain positions, yes. Uh, we have two critical league matches coming up. It's not easy, Jeremiah but I'm going to pick guys that I think can play in multiple games, resilient guys, guys that need to be out here for us to go further in the Open Cup and then try and make sure or hope that nothing bad happens and we, you know, are able to put field good teams for the two league games. You mentioned that you mentioned that the U.S. Open Cup champs, what in studying the teams do they do that is going to be challenging for the U.S.? So back line of five, well-coached. You know, whether they play 5-4-1 or you want to call it something different, 3-4-3, three, three, uh, you know, it's a good team, the right back's good, center forward's good, you know, steady, the goalkeeper from Atlanta a few years back, it's a good team. Uh, would you talk about being a little bit light, just any updates on injuries, Josh, uh, Leo? Well, again, Josh was looking towards St. Louis, he might not make St. Louis, but RSL, he's hoping for that. Reed is available for both games. Uh, uh, Brow, no, still a ways away. Uh, Pedro is fine. We'll, we'll increase his minutes. You, you, you've had a couple of really interesting prospects, young players that just kind of start to hear their name nationally and things like that. Uh, George is one of those players that kind of, because of how fun he is, uh, do you have a need to like talk to him? To Trying to get him to express who he is, because he is exciting. Now, you know, the knock on Georgie is, what is his final product? He gets in a really good positions, and then the game has to, in that moment, has to slow down so he can make the final decision, but the kid's exciting to watch. We're trying to magnify that times 10. Because I say that I take it seriously, and then what do I put out there? So it is a balancing act. I think our fixture congestion, the current state of our team, the roster, I think there's certain things. Had, had everybody been in a good run of form, had our league results been better, had we, you know, not taken Josh, his injury was a really, you know, one that hurt us in that in this regard. I mean, there are some extenuating circumstances, but you're on the right track, Jeremiah. If I had a full squad, full roster, there might even be more sprinkled in. Players' personalities, their skill sets, their strengths. Um, you wouldn't say that, you know, Raul in his day, yes, could run behind the back line, but not so much anymore. Albert, you wouldn't call him a sprinter, but you've got wide guys here that can get in behind. So... It all depends on where the ball turns over, how it moves up the field. You're probably talking about the one time when Albert and Raul kind of got in each other's way. Raul likes to check off the line now. Uh, those are issues that we talk about. We talk about with the players collectively. Uh, it's about making sure that players 
the team we put together, how it's meshed together, that we have the right balance of guys that can run in behind and guys that are better in possession. So it's a work in progress still. Again, when I looked at the game the second time, I thought there were some good moments where we in control of the game. Yes, that we're in control of the game. The, the thing for me when you want to talk about specific plays, and this isn't to harp on one guy, but because it's a team sport and I can give you probably five others. But there was a play right after we had scored where we have possession. It's like 20, 25 passes. We go, we get the ball out to Alex. You know, the ball comes back. He plays JP top of the box. And his decision in that moment was to dribble by the last guy to try and score. But Albert Rusnak's right here. And all he has to do is just make a little one-touch pass to Albert. And Albert's got Jordan on his left. Raul on his right, the goal ahead of him, and those are the plays that we have to make. And so, you know, when people say we pass the ball around, yeah, it's possession with a purpose. We want to make sure that we're in control one nothing. we control tempo, but at the same time, players have to understand when those openings come up, they have to you know, try and score another goal. Brian, just how difficult is it in all coaches go through is trying to have the player understand, express yourself, but here's the team goal and trust the process. Uh, because going back to that, that, that point right there, right? Well, I mean, look, I trust JP's decision making. He's one of the champions league. He's done a lot of good things for us. Uh, I'm just talking about in general, what's ailing the team is kind of, they're not quite in sync in that final third. That, that's been our Achilles heel. So how do we get that out of them? Like, you know, I'm gonna let Georgie go, let him have, you know, fun and do what he does. Should I do the same thing with Jordan? Is Jordan the same type of player? What should I say to Albert? You know, what do I need to say to Albert? Maybe that's a firm word rather than, mm -hmm. hey, go have fun. So all those little things come into play when we talk to the players about this game and then St. Louis and, you know, the RSL game at home next week. He rarely gives up passes. I mean, he, he's a good possession guy, but do I need him to be more dangerous in front of goal? Yes. Do I need him to have more, you know, final passes? Yes, because I think that's in his toolbox. Uh, maybe it's a little bit of dysfunction within the team. Having said that, I can't, you know, I can't not say that he's been underperforming. I know he knows that he can play better, and, you know, he's trying. I have to give him credit. He works. He does the work. It's a little bit of both. I think he would say that he's the first one to say, I can do a little bit better. But I can protect him a little bit by saying, you know, the team hasn't been great 